In a recent video, I walked through everything running on my main Proxmox server. But today, I want to zoom in on the five apps that I use most often. The ones that genuinely make my self-hosted setup seem more useful, more private, and more enjoyable to work with. Also, I would love to hear what your top five apps are, so be sure to drop those in the comment section down below. First up is Dumpad, part of the delightfully minimal suite from Dumbware.io. Their whole philosophy is about keeping apps simple and distraction-free, and Dumpad nails it. I use Dumpad constantly between jotting down notes, outlining scripts, drafting social posts, it's always open. It's not flashy, but that's literally the point. It just works and it never gets in the way. Be sure to check out the whole family of dumb apps over on Dumbware.io if you're looking for apps that each do one thing really well without a lot of frills and gimmicks. Next is Vault Warden, and it's my go-to password manager. Now it's a Rust-based re-implementation of the Bitwarden server API, and it's been rock solid in my home lab for years. But it can do more than just store passwords. It can also store things like credit card and debit card information, personal ID, notes, and even SSH keys. Now my wife and I used to rely on a popular paid service, but after numerous price hikes, feature removals, access restrictions, and a few too many server security breaches on their end, I decided it was time to self-host. And admittedly, I was nervous about self-hosting a password manager. Passwords are critical, and messing this up wasn't an option. But Vault Warden turned out to be really easy to deploy and maintain. And with Proxmox backups in place, I sleep a lot easier knowing that I've got a safety net. This next one is a bit of a niche, and it's called Moretta. Now, I want to start this by saying that I fully support funding journalism and education, but I've always found it super frustrating when sites aggressively limit access to basic information based on your IP address. Maybe you've got a public network, or maybe you've got a roommate that also accesses these services, and as a result, you can't access the information that you need. Moretta helps bypass some of those paywalls. Not always perfect, but it's often just enough to be useful. Also, as a side note here, if you're using Moretta regularly on a specific site, please consider supporting that organization directly. Tools like this are helpful, but they shouldn't replace fair compensation for good content. Now, the fourth item on this list is AdGuard Home. And honestly, I think everyone should be running something like this. Whether it's AdGuard, PyHole, or Technidium, Blocking ads and trackers at the network level is one of the easiest ways to improve your privacy and security. Look, ads aren't just annoying. They can actually carry malware. And tracking scripts are quietly building detailed profiles about you, including everything from your shopping habits to your daily life based on how, when, and what you're searching online. With AdGuard Home or something similar, I can block most of that noise before it even reaches my devices. Now, the last thing on this list is post is, and I know that it's not for everyone, but it has been a game changer in how I manage my social media accounts. I use it to schedule posts across multiple platforms, including updates, live stream announcements, engagement pieces, and I do that all from one dashboard. And because I don't have to log into each platform individually, it's streamlined and simplified my workflow in a way that's really, really hard to give up. And if I need help creating a witty post about something, I can integrate an AI helper to assist me in that process. And because no top five list would be complete without some sort of a bonus item, there's Plex. And I didn't include it in the top five because media servers are practically a rite of passage for self-hosters, kind of a gateway app that gets most of us hooked. Plex is special to me for a couple of reasons, though. First, because it's a media server that's easy for my family to use on a number of devices, and also possibly like you, it's the app that got me into self-hosting, but it's the app that basically launched this channel and this community. I installed Plex in early 2020 and loved the process. It was the reason I started learning Docker. It was also one of the first self-hosting videos that I made. It got me excited about wanting to learn more about self-hosting apps in Docker and made me want to create educational content to help others learn about self-hosting and getting away from major platforms that would make the user the product. 
This was almost six years ago, and I'm still learning new things and sharing them on this channel. And while Plex is absolutely the most used app in my home lab, it's how this channel started. And that actually really means a lot to me. When I started self-hosting, I thought it was about control. But over time, I realized it's also about trust. Trusting yourself to run your own infrastructure and trusting the tools that you choose. So if you're just getting started with self-hosting, some of these apps are a great place to begin. And if you've already got a home lab up and running, I'd love to hear what your top five apps are in the comment section down below. But with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.